All right, so this is the 10th tutorial in our series. We're already at 10, look at that. So, tutorial 10 is about event listeners. Now, as I mentioned when we started the series, what I, there's what I consider the five main uh, pieces of Action Script 3, at least for making games. And that's variables, functions, arrays, loops, and event listeners. And you could say, you know, there's some smaller things as well, but if I had to pick the five pillars, that's them. So we're going to learn about that fifth one. We'll get to arrays and loops very soon. They, they both go together, and, but I think it's better to cover this first. So what is an event listener? We'll get to that. First step, though. If just to remind everyone what our project is doing, in case you didn't see one of the previous tutorials, it's we're animating the character, we're telling it to fly to the right until it hits the square and to bounce back when it does hit the square. And it, it loops so it, it moves back and forth, keeps checking if it's hitting the square, which it is. But we're doing that now by playing a timeline. We're, we have this fly right function being called every five frames, which is actually what makes it move to the right. So we're, we're going to get rid of all this. See, I'm removing all this. Our, our, there's going to be no code, period, in the IDE. No timeline code. There's going to be no frames in the code. There's just the one, no movement, I should say. There's just the one starting frame with a couple of layers for our graphics. No code at all. All of our code is in our document class. And the reason that we're going to be able to get away from, not rely on, the timeline playing is because the event listener we're going to be using, which is called an enter frame, is called at every frame of the movie. So whatever your frame rate's set to, mine is set to 30 right now, this, this listener is going to be called every frame. So 30 times a second in this case. So that's why we're not going to need the timeline. So we're going to restructure. This is our existing code uh, for that function. We've got the, it's just basically the document class gets started. It calls the fly right function, which does a hit test and checks if, it's, if the flyer is touching the square. And if it is, it pulls backwards. If it's not, it goes to the right. And our pull backwards function just makes it go to the left. So we're going to restructure this. So instead of calling fly right, we're going to call the start game function. When the document, once again, to remind you, this is the constructor function of our document class. Almost all classes in ActionScript and certainly the document class need a constructor function, which once again, just to repeat quickly, is the function that runs when, when it's first created. It's the construction. It's, it's the step one. It sets in course everything else. So we're going to call the start game function, which I'm going to write now. And what the start game function is going to do is this is where we're going to add our event listener. Now here's how this is set up. So this is a function. Add event listener is a function, and I'm adding it to the stage, which is the most common place you would add something like an enter frame listener. So this function takes, I believe it's five parameters. It takes five different um, arguments you can give to it. Basically, five different commands you can give to it. I'll, I'll get into parameters at some point, or maybe just sprinkle it in here and there. But the first thing it takes is actually a string. In this case, it's the string event. There's also mouse events. There's keyboard, keyboard events, which we're going to get to soon, or keyboard control. But right now, this is just an event. And the type of event it is is an enter frame event. 
when the, it's basically saying when the flash movie is entering the new the new frame check this do this every time it moves to a new frame so 30 times a second in this case and what and this so this is all this is all the first parameter that it takes the second parameter it takes is a function now that's going to be whatever function you want it to call every second so this is where you would in a game since we're moving towards games it's usually where you would call where you would have your game loop your main loop that was doing almost everything almost all the complicated stuff in the game was being is being done here all the hit detection all the movement of characters and anything that needs to be checked very frequently uh, which, which is a lot of things, the more complicated the game is. So we've added this event listener to the stage, and every frame it's going to call game loop. So right now we're going to add this function, game loop. And it's important to note here that because it's an event, because this this is not just a function that I'm just calling like fly right for example it you can see that it there's no parameters it doesn't take anything so this might be a little difficult to explain but this function it's an event you can see right here if this were mouse event this would be mouse event so the type of the type of function you're telling Flash that this this function takes a parameter of an event. Now, what event is it? It's an enter frame event. So every frame we're going to call this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set up more like a traditional game would be set up. So what I'm going to do is we're going to change our function our fly right function to just being called fly because it's no longer going to only be making the character fly to the right it's going to handle both of them both left and right so what we're going to do is we're going to create a boolean variable now we went over variables i don't know if we touched on boolean but all that means is a true or false variable so we're going to call it touching and it's going to be the type of variable is boolean and we're going to set its initial value to false it's false to start with and what this touching variable is going to do is it's just going to tell us whether the flyer is touching the square just like we're doing here but it's a more organized and a, a way that we can control better you, something you want to get in the habit of doing, of keeping track of the state of things, whether they're touching, whether they're not, whether they're moving, whether they're not, whether keys are pressed or not, etc. That's the power of Boolean variables. You can you can do so many things with just this this one type of variable. You'd be surprised. So anyway, what we're gonna do in our fly function, uh, I'm sorry, our fly function is let me just reference yeah exactly so our our hit testing code is going to be moved to another function but for now our fly code is all it's going to do is test whether we're touching the square or not and we'll we'll, we'll I'll show you how this all connects so if touching is false which it starts false, then we're gonna move we're gonna move the flyer to the right. So we're gonna increase its x value by 10. If we're not touching the square. Now the second part of our if statement structure here is else if touching equals true, if we are touching the square, we're just gonna take this code right here because we're we're condensing and organizing our code to get it more like it would be in a real game. 
So we don't need this pull backwards function. We don't need this. We don't need to separate. It's always better to have a function do one thing to organize the code in such a way that you're condensing it. You're not repeating yourself. So this is actually a much neater way of doing it. So basically what the fly function does simply is it tests the value, it checks the value of this variable that we declared, which by the way is a global variable, meaning it's, it can be accessed anywhere in your document class. And why is that? Because, because it's, it's not created inside of any function. Now if I were to create, I'll show you in a second uh, how that is. Um, let's just test where we're at right now. Okay, right. So, what, we, what we've got here, what was that set? Anyway, um, let, let's get our check collisions function in, intact here. So we're checking the value of the touching variable and if it's false, we move to the right. If it's true, we move to the left. So now what we need to do, since we removed our hit testing code, we need to, once again, check if the flyer is actually touching the square. So we're gonna add we're, this new function we're gonna create called check collisions. We're adding that to our enter frame loop. That's the beauty of the loop. It's called every frame we can have it do a bunch of things and, it, and it'll check, each one will run the same amount of times. So it, they'll, it'll keep it in sync. That's why it's such a good thing to, to set up for your game. So let's create this check collisions function. And all this is, is our same hit testing code. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this from Copy the first line here, my backup there. So if the if the flyer is touching the square, instead of moving him through the hit test, we're simply going to change the value of the touching variable. So the flyer hit test object, we went over that. If the flyer is touching the square, change touching to true. No matter what it is previously, now it's true. Else, else, meaning if it's not touching the square, touching equals false. So that's our check collision functions. All it does is swap, it basically sets up this fly function because this is this is the one handling the toggling of the touching property. It's either false, true, false, true. It's toggling it, and then this is referencing it, telling it which direction to move. Uh, what's, what's going on here? Type was not found. Oh, duh. Perfect example here. This error message I'm getting up here is because I haven't imported. Keep it. Look at this error. It's error 1046. What does it say? Type was not found or was not a compile time constant event. Now, what does that mean? It means that I haven't imported the correct class. Once again, because we're we're writing, we're inside of a document class. We're essentially outside of Flash, sort of in a weird way we have to import any of Flash's classes that we want to use. I'm actually surprised the program didn't automatically import the one I want. But the one I want is Flash Display Events. I just need to import that set of classes because of this here. And be, the error was, was here where I was checking. I wasn't able to read events because I, wasn't, I was referencing a class that Flash didn't know where it was, if that makes sense.
going on? Send to file. Oh. oh, I did a typo. Sorry about that. This is the class I want to import. Copy that. There we go. So now you can see it's it's moving faster because it's th at 30 times a second. So we're bumping into the square, but we're we're telling it every frame to do this check, and you can see why now it's quickly shuddering back and forth because instead of every five frames, like our timeline, it's checking every frame. So let's let's make this look a little nicer. How about we just stop the character when he touches the square? So instead he's, he's not twitching like a drug addict. So what we're gonna do is we're going to change this to <clears throat> what we want to do here. What's it looking like? We're gonna change this so instead of if if touching is true in our fly function, instead of moving him to the left which gets him in that shutter pattern, we're actually gonna remove our event listener, which is an important thing to keep track of too. If you no longer want your event listener to continue running, you should remove it for performance reasons and just for, to, for debugging too. So it's easier to find out if there's a glitch. If it's still running and you don't want it to, you could create, there could be a bunch of possibilities that course could happen creating glitches you don't want to deal with so it's the same syntax as creating it you just replace instead of add event listener it's remove event listener so what that's going to do just to clarify it's so what we were doing before is if touching was false we move to the right if touching was true we move to the left now we're just going to stop the loop we're going to stop the whole loop so the character is going to stop there you go. He touched the square, everything's turned off. So all that's happening is he's animating. That's that's his that's built into his movie clip, just a 10 frame animation. But he's not, as you can see, he's not moving from left to right, actually moving in physical space, I should say. So uh, that's the that's the basics. This once again, this is just one event listener, but it's the most common, one of the most common, and it's the most crucial for making games. We're going to get into other event listeners. I'm not sure when exactly. Like I mentioned, mouse events for checking clicks and double clicks and right clicks, uh, as well as keyboard events, which check if certain keys are pressed and when they're released and held down, etc. All right, thanks for watching. And... Um, Please spread the word about tutorials if there's anyone else you know that might be interested in learning. Thanks.